Hi, my name's Danny, also known as GCSE Potential, and today we're with the amazing Bav. He is an engineer studying at Cambridge in his first year, so would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, I'm Bav, Bavia. Um, I'm studying engineering at Magdalen. I'm a first year, yeah. Thank you very much, amazing. So I'm very excited today because we're going to be talking about how to get into Cambridge for engineering. So we're going to cover the um, literally everything about the application process. So GCSEs, A-levels, personal statement, admissions tests, and finally the interview. But yeah, to begin with, what GCSEs do you need to study engineering at Cambridge? Obviously everything is going to be contextualised, so it depends on where you're from and like where you're studying, yeah. how your school is in general, but I would say you need to aim for at least like eights, nines in the maths and the sciences. Like they're the ones they really care about. This is just what I've heard, but I think it's Cambridge is slightly less concerned about A level at GCSEs than Oxford. Okay. So I think they will obviously be important, but you shouldn't stress too much about it. Like just focus on your A levels at the end of the day. Perfect. So are there any GCSEs which matter more than others? So I think you said like maths and STEM are more important. Are there any specific ones? I'd recommend like just picking stuff that you're interested in to maybe help build up your interests at an early age. Like if you think you might want to go down a computer science type route, take maybe CS, maybe further maths, GCSE. Um, yeah, that's about it. Like so now moving on to A-levels. I think a lot of people always talk about like which A-levels you need because I think some people are concerned about further maths. Some people don't want to do further maths. There's also a thing about some people hating chemistry. So which A-levels do you need for engineering at Cambridge? Which ones are best and are there any that you don't necessarily need my help, etc.? So definitely the ones I'd recommend would definitely the maths and physics that's like compulsory i think yeah. even on the website it will say that's compulsory and then if your school offers it i definitely take further maths because they will question you if you don't and they will ask you in your interview why you're not doing it um and it will just make life pretty hard when you get here uh, if you do get an offer without further maths anyways and then your other option the most common ones would be chemistry uh, computer science or dt so i'd say Ideally one of those three, but um, I don't think it's too important, I guess. It's just what you're interested in. Ideally something uh, academic, maybe not like art or something. But very reasonable, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think everyone here does like math, further math, physics chem from what yeah, I've heard. Yeah, that's the most common ones. And especially that'll be useful for when we've got topics like thermodynamics um, and fluids. Like it will be useful to have that background in chemistry and material stuff as well. Amazing, thank you very much. So now starting off with the actual Oxbridge admissions process. So the three main things they look for, aside from GCSEs and A-levels, are your personal statement, your admissions test, and your interview. So the first stage of that is a personal statement. There's a big disclaimer here, it is changing. So previously, when we did our personal statement, it was 4,000 characters, one big document. But nowadays, it's the same content, but they've changed it to three separate questions. I think one on motivation, another one on the way you learn best or something like that. So we'll still talk about our own, per well, Bav's personal statement, um, but the same knowledge is basically applicable to when the questions are just three instead. So yeah, kind of with the personal statement, with engineering, it's a bit weird because it's STEM, right? So how should you kind of approach the personal statement? What sort of things should you include? What did you include personally? And are there any like big things which you really need to remember? So I'd say the biggest things which you have to include are some sort of personal projects or engineering competitions which you've taken part of. They do like um, you to have done something before just to sh prove your interest. And sometimes, obviously it's dependent on college, but sometimes they will ask, and I was asked in my interview for Maudlin, a bit about the projects which I've done. So maybe like 15 minutes of was asking questions related to that. Yeah, I'd definitely recommend that. Maybe talk about any competitions you've taken part in. So they wanna see that you have good problem solving skills. So I guess you can prove that by doing stuff like the uh, UKMT math challenges. Um, and if you do well with them, obviously make sure to include all of the stages you get to in the certificate you get. Same with uh, the British Physics Olympiad, that's a big one that a lot of people do here. And yeah, there's also Informatics Olympiad as well, I guess, and Chemistry and etc. There's all the different Olympiads, so I definitely include your achievements in any of those fields. Nice, so mainly personal projects, kind of doing those competitions. What about stuff like if a student, for example, hasn't done a personal project, they haven't done um, any competitions and they're kind of like a few days left until the deadline then they need to write something what would you do in that last minute situation i'd say the best thing you can do then is at least have something that you can talk about like if they do ask you personal statement questions and i know at least other universities so like imperial 
they often ask about those kind of things. So, But yeah, so I'd say maybe research a field that you're interested in. Like a lot of people do stuff relating to rockets maybe or like cars, motorsport. If you're interested in any of those, look around the maths behind some of those. Yeah, just kind of just the way things work, basically. If you find something you're interested in, look into the maths behind it and the physics behind it and see if you can find out some more. So I'd say watch some YouTube videos on maybe some projects that other people have done as well, just to get inspiration on maybe what you could approach because there are things that you can do like little science experiments type stuff that you can do within one or two days and on top of that I'd watch YouTube videos maybe about these topics which you're finding interests in. Uh, a lot of people do stuff like electronics related so maybe some Arduino projects a lot of people like to do that. So for engineering you also have to do an admissions test and that's the next stage of the process. So when Bav applied he had to do the ENGA um, which is like engineering admissions test, something like that. But nowadays you have to do the ESAT instead. I would say they seem to be quite similar. Um, so preparation that he did for the ANGA, I think would be very much applicable to the ESAT. So I'm going to ask similar sort of questions, but kind of like keep in mind that the exams might be slightly different. So yeah, kind of what is the ANGA or the ESAT? Um, how did you prepare and what tips do you have or what would you recommend to do? So the main thing about the ANGA, and this will apply to the ESAT as well, is the time pressure. So what you really want to do is make sure that you're fast and you can think fast. And the best way to do that is just to do loads of problems. Like you can't wait and expect the last week before to just try bang out everything because that isn't going to be your best way to like get the most practice in. I would say look at everything. There's TMUA, look at the MAT, look at the PAT, which is a physics aptitude test for Oxford engineering and physics. And then obviously do all the past papers for the anger. There's also the NSAA which is, I think the papers are quite similar, but yeah, have a look at them too, I'd say. The usual stuff is also try to do maybe some BFO past papers. So that's the Physics Olympiad. That will be more, they're more long answer questions. So they'll be more useful for stuff like your interview, but um, still kind of motivating the ideas that you need in some of the questions which come. It will be useful regardless. So many resources. Wow. Are there any that you would prioritize personally? So like which ones do you think are the highest quality, etc.? So the highest quality stuff for me personally that I found was so BFO past papers. I also did because a lot of the questions on the ESA and the ENGA will be just like straight maths questions. Mm. So you should prioritize maybe doing some UKMT papers. Some of the questions there are very similar to the stuff that will come up, especially the earlier ones. I'd also say like even just working through some textbooks, which are there are some big ones, which are a guy called David Morin. He writes um, these textbooks, which are kind of just problems in physics. And they're definitely good to kind of help your understanding so that you can do better in these type of questions, even if it's about speed, understanding and knowing the little tricks and the pitfalls which you might go into, like to avoid them, it's best to have a good understanding of the physics. And that can only be done if you do like read textbooks or read, you know, more advanced physics stuff than maybe just A-level. That's amazing. These are some niche resources, you know. Thank you very much. I didn't expect this high quality of stuff. So I guess the last thing to ask is like, what sort of score should you be aiming for? Because I know the end is out of nine. Uh, from one to nine, I think it's great. It's like, what sort of score should you be aiming for? Um, obviously, there's a lot of context involved, as you've already mentioned earlier. So it really does depend. If you've got lower than this, you're not feeling that motivated, it is completely okay because they judge you in the context of your score. But yeah, what sort of score roughly does the average UK offer holder have? Yeah, so definitely the average UK offer holder is five, uh, like around a 5.0, but don't be put off by that. Like a lot of people I know have gotten in with scores lower and a lot of people have been rejected with scores much higher than that. Also, it depends a lot if you're a UK student or international. So, um, yeah, sorry if you're international, I guess. <laughs> Other than that, I'd say just aim for the highest score you can possibly get. Doing past papers will help you get a feel of where you're roughly at and maybe if you need to do more work or maybe if you're already at the right level. Um, so, yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. And now the final stage. Oh, my gosh, the interview, the coveted interview. So kind of what do engineering interviews sort of consist of and what is the best ways to prep for those sorts of interviews? Because they look terrifying. Yeah. So engineering interviews are basically just maths and physics problems. I have mentioned before that they can. Some colleges will ask you some uh, questions on your personal statement and any projects if you've talked about them. But I would say that's more uncommon. It's more uncommon than not. Maybe look online to see if people who are 
so the college that you apply to, if people have talked about their past experiences, because usually they will be quite similar, and on the style. So Trinity has an in-person interview, and they have their own Trinity engineering test, which you have to do as well, on top of the normal interview. So just be aware of that, I guess, before applying, and pick the college wisely so you know what you're expecting. With preparing for the interview, I'd say definitely look at a website called I Want to Study Engineering. Again, like I mentioned before, look at some textbooks which go into some more advanced maths and physics. Um, I'd say look at the BFO past paper questions. Again, they're definitely your best. It's your best bet in getting stuff which is as close to interview questions as possible. I definitely recommend doing as many maths questions as you can as possible as well. Don't just think because you're applying to engineering, you're only gonna get physics questions. They do like to ask basically entirely questions based around maths, so geometry, calculus. I'd practice deriving stuff from first principles, like even just as simple as like the area of a circle, for example, like just understanding the ways that you can derive these things, volumes, areas of different shape, using calculus. That's like a thing they like to ask, I'd say. Um, another big thing about the interview is make sure you're smiling, like they care so much. I've had feedback from my DOS, that's my director of studies, like once I got here, just asking him about the interviews and he was telling me himself, they really look for someone who is like and seems to be enjoying themselves, asking questions, really involved, like trying to be, don't go crazy, but you know, be enthusiastic is what I'm trying to say and show them that you're actually enjoying the questions and the problem solving, yeah, which you're doing. Nice, thank you so much. I think that's so important. Like if you're not smiling, they're gonna think you're like, hey, what's going on? And you have to do it for three years. So motivation is extremely important. I think the final question I wanted to ask is like, how much do you think college choice matters for engineering? Because I know you mentioned that Trinity has a different interview, for example. So it doesn't matter with regards to like some accepting lower and higher anger scores, some accepting, um, we're having vastly different interviews. And how did you personally go about picking a college? College does matter but maybe not for the same reasons. I'd say just pick a college which you think you'll enjoy, like being there, like definitely, maybe you're lazy and you think that you're not gonna get up early in the morning and go far away. Like some of the colleges are like a 20 minute bike from departments, so that's kind of long. But other than that, I'd say they all have fairly similar interview processes. And if you're scared of applying to a more competitive college because you think you won't get in, that's probably not likely because the pool does exist mm. and they will, if you've got a good admissions test score and you've got a good interview, then another college will take you out of the pool. I picked my college basically because I thought it looked nice, mm -hmm. uh, like the location of it. I also thought the, the DOS, so I actually looked at like some of the members of staff there and I thought they might be, they might be good for supervising some of the more interesting, some of the topics which I find more interesting. I'd say if you are really scared about this idea of like going to a, applying to a really competitive college and it Trinity, will put you up. Gosh. Yeah, <laughs> Trinity, like frankly, if you look at the admission statistics, it does seem like Trinity is way more competitive than the others, even though they have a big court cohort they have 10 times the applicants to just for your confidence maybe just pick a college which is maybe seems to be less competitive but once again do pick a college which you'll be happy going to because there's nothing worse than you arriving here and being like really upset with your college choice yeah thank you very much i think you make a very good point like you're going to be here for three years so don't go somewhere that you're going to absolutely hate um i think you're pretty happy with your college though right yeah i love Maudlin. like it's a great college do apply here look at that propaganda oh my gosh i think the last thing is baf's actually a gappy so a gappy is Jin. Um, and he had a very interesting gap year. So do you want to talk a little bit about A, what you did in your gap year, and B, any sort of advice to anyone who's applying on a gap year? On my gap year, I actually did an internship at a company called CMR Surgical. So I found this internship through just looking on LinkedIn for like gap year internship opportunities. And I found this, it's based in Cambridge. So I also had a year living in Cambridge, which was nice, I guess. And, um, so yeah, so that was just working. I can't talk too much about like the work, specific work mm -hmm. I did, but it was mechanical stuff, a little bit of software type stuff as well. And it was just a nice experience, you know, like getting firsthand experience, how it feels to work in an engineering company. Um, so I'd really recommend it. And I know a lot of people that do do it that are over here as well. It's recommended for engineering to do that. So they will consider your application more highly if you do do that. So I'd also recommend looking at a website called YINI which is the year in industry program, they will help you sort out um, basically year in industry before you have gone to university. So wow. gap year opportunities and internships are not that common yeah. for students who are straight out of A-levels. So this website does help um, basically put them all together and it will help you sort it out. So I didn't use it, but I know a lot of people that have used it.
and it's helped them a lot. That's actually amazing. Like imagine going into the workforce, having Cambridge on your CV and having a year of work. That's actually ridiculous. Wow. I didn't even realize I was in Cambridge. Your work was in Cambridge. That's so nice. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So Bav, so what's Cambridge actually been like? And specifically, what has the engineering course been like? Because I know it's, it seems very difficult. So yeah, what do you sort of get up to? Yeah. So I'd say a very important thing to realize like when you're applying to Cambridge Engineering is that you are actually interested in engineering. I know a lot of people do talk about the engineering to finance pipeline and that does exist and there are a lot of people at, who do Cambridge Engineering then go on to IB, finance, sometimes quant and different types of trading, different types of trading basically, yeah. But the course is very suited to people who want to go into engineering. We have four papers in first year and you do stuff going from structures to circuits to mechanics and maths. If you're really interested in just one field of engineering, so maybe like you just like software stuff or you just like um, maybe just mechanical stuff, then it might not be the best idea to apply to Cambridge for that course specifically, for this course, for the general engineering course. Very fast. So if you do want to specialise, I think a lot of universities offer those courses. I know Imperial is really big on like so many different types, aerospace and all of that. You do specialise at Cambridge, obviously, eventually, but I feel like I know too many people who are just interested in the maybe the computer side of things. Mm. And so they would have been better off just applying for computer science and not dragging themselves through the civil engineering and stuff that we have to do. And maybe some people who are just really interested in maths and then also have to drag themselves through all the engineering stuff. I'd say just understand that when you apply to this course, you're going to do a lot of engineering. We have a lot of projects. We do a lot of labs. We do a lot of coursework. So don't apply if you aren't interested in engineering, basically. Very fair. And I think it is difficult because like last year I applied for PP, bad decision. I was not interested in philosophy and I tried to gaslight myself or whatever. I was thinking, oh, it's fine. I can focus on politics and economics. But in reality, wrong move, bad move. Um, but yeah, I guess the next thing is Bav actually sat STEP. So STEP is the Cambridge Maths entrance exam. It's known as basically the hardest exam an 18 year old sits in the world. So I still can't, I still can't believe you did that. But talk to us a bit about like sitting step, what that experience was like um, and what advice you'd have for someone who's considering it. I actually obviously wouldn't, didn't choose to do step optionally. They, because I was a gap year, uh, really? applied on a gap year, they gave me an offer which required a grade two in step two. No way. <laughs> and that came out of nowhere? Yeah. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was peak, like, I just, on results day on January, I just found out that, oh, my offer has a grade two in step, so that was not nice to see. <laughs> but I will say that it was probably the most useful thing that, like, anyone could have given me, because the sheer amount of problem solving in step is probably even more than what I do at university now. And the maths, the problem solving required for those maths questions is way more than any of the maths that I'm doing here in my first year of engineering. So for anyone who's planning on applying next year or like um, planning on applying to engineering, I'd recommend doing STEP and applying for it even if your offer doesn't have it because the big thing about STEP is because it's also so hard, the offer that usually they give, so there is Peter House, a lot of you might, if you look online, you'll see that Peter House is known for giving everyone a grade two in step two offer. So there's two papers, step two and step three. Step three is like, a lot of further math stuff. So step two is the one that they give the offer for mainly. And Peterhouse is known for giving the grade two and step offer, but they take a lot of people who even miss it, like get maybe a midway through grade three yeah. or a high three. So if you apply with a step grade, regardless of, as long as it's not a fail, it's, it's actually a good qualification to have. Yeah, very reasonable. I mean, it looks so difficult. You can definitely check out past papers, but if you manage to do well, like you got it, you got the two in the end, right? Yeah. I Amazing. Like, I st ugh, just just look at the papers. Just look at the papers. That's still ridiculous. But yeah, I guess I then moving on to kind of the end now. This is some like final remarks before we move on to some extra bit. Um, so kind of like what final advice do you have for anyone applying for engineering? Any last tips and tricks? I'd say once again, just look through the resources I mentioned before. Make sure you're really confident with your maths and physics for the interview, because that is what all your interview is going to be. It's just going to be maths and physics questions. I'd say try to do projects if you can. You can look online for inspiration. There's a lot of different things that people do. Make sure you're happy with what the course is going to entail. Search up. So there's a website called Cam Cribs, C-A-M and then Cribs. Um, that has basically all our example papers for first year. And it's even got all the answers. So a lot of people tend to use that to cheat when they're here. <laughs> But um, that's got all the example papers, so you can already see the kind of things that you're going to be covering when you come here. Yeah. 
So maybe that will help you get a feel of if these topics seem interesting or not. Even with maths and sometimes some of the Natsuki papers, they're online. So you can also compare against them and just see what you're really interested in. And if engineering is the course that's going to suit you best. So thank you very much, Pat, for coming on. Hopefully this has been remotely useful. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But very, very grateful. So many high quality resources. I'm very surprised. You definitely worked very hard and deserved your offer, of course. So um, thank you so much, Pat. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, guys. And you can message me on LinkedIn if you have any more questions. I'm happy to answer them. What a saint. <laughs> He'll put it in the bio. Put it in the bio. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.